Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is our number two, and we promise you, woo, 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 right here on Freaky Friday. You're tuned in to truthfrequencyradio.com. I want to thank each and every one of you out there on the streams, in the chat, in the archive, AM, FM, wherever you are. We are about to slip it into overdrive here because we're going to go to Bill Demarest. And Bill, just at the start of the break there, began to speak about a lot of alien stuff, Bill. And I cut you off, right, because sometimes we always go through the best stuff on the break and the listeners miss it. But you were talking about Nordics, Dracos. Talk to us about these alien races, Bill. What I've studied, you have Valiant Thor who lives in Venus, and he spent five years living in the Pentagon, walking and doing what he wanted. You have that gentleman that hacked into the uh, Pentagon and found out that there were transfers of officers to ships that didn't exist, and they got him and did, gave him jail time. A fellow Scotsman, dis- Gary McKinnon, good man. Yeah, right, for disclosing all this. And from what I understand, I wasn't sure about the number, but according to people who worked for NASA, who worked with the number two man who was above anybody in the paperclip. We have 20 fully armed space armadas out there with the 10 kilometer uh, battle cruisers. The Nordics, they have 20. And from what I understand, the Dracos have roughly, I think it was like 800 or 400. Uh, Next time I'm on the show, I will have my research dead on. The the Dracos are spread throughout our galaxy, and ours are close to home, per se, and we're working with the Nordics. And also, we've been mining the moon with that Air Force thing that makes the tunnels, that uses lasers and turns the tunnel into glass. We've been shipping them up to the moon and Mars. And if you take into account in Andrew Bishago and William White Crow, and you accept all this as real, some people realize that they're bacteria in a Petri dish. Some of us realize how big the Petri dish is, but there's one thing we are being observed from way beyond. And I wanted to go to, in 1966, when Star Trek previewed, The elites were laughing at us because we thought this was science fiction. The elites have had everything that you saw in Star Trek in 1966 in play, in their world, off-world, on-world, wherever. And they release it to us a little at a time, dribs and drabs, with uh, planned obsolescence just so that they can suck money from us. I have a simple flip phone. I don't want to get involved in any of their, you know, $700 phones, which... Won't let you on an airplane any longer. But Joe, I, I accept it. We're we're just we're just one of many. We're just we're, we're we're like sea otters compared to whales, and the whales are out there. And someday we're going to kill all the whales. And that Star Trek episode where the whales are no longer here, <laughs> we're going to pay the price for that. And Bill, I know this is kind of speculating, right? But I mean, I'm liking this. This fits with the kind of stuff that I really do believe in. And when it comes to these other civilizations out there, I mean, is there some kind of, I mean, are we confined here? Are we looked upon as being lower, lesser than them? Are we better on the map? Where do we stand in the kind of pecking order of this? We can only grow. We can only grow from where we are. And once we accept what it is, and as I said earlier, I accept that I get in my Flintstone mobile internal combustion engine, which is beyond primitive in in the whole picture of things. But I did want to mention, I had a neighbor who was a whistleblower who ratted out the contractors that were making the gun barrels for the um, F4 Phantoms. They were using inferior materials, so he lost his position and everything. Now, the story he tells me, which is, you know, secondhand, he told me that he had a girlfriend who was in a secure area of a military base 
And she called him into a secured area and said, you've got to come in. He says, no, I don't have the clearance. I can't do it. She told him that this stuff is going to fall off of the wall. We're talking millions of dollars worth of equipment, monitors, et cetera, was going to fall off the wall and that he had to come in and secure the shelving. Well, he walks in there and here's what he thought was a TV monitor, but it was a telescope. He walks in and he sees this monitor and here's the space shuttle on this monitor and it, it's parked next to a ship that is incomprehensible, so much larger than the space shuttle. He looks, he says, what's that? And she, who's got clearance beyond cl clearance, says to him, oh, they're back. No big deal. So I think that they sent Glenn, Glenn Beck. Uh, Glenn Beck? I'm uh, going to say uh, Glenn Beck. <laughs> wow, that's freaky, all right. Whoa. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John, John Glenn, do you know why they sent John Glenn up to space? How old was he? 68, 90, 200. They sent John Glenn back up into space as an ambassador from Earth. Can you figure any other reason they would send that old codger up there? Who, because you know. he's old and he well, was having like a <laughs> uh, kind of like an in life crisis, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Follow, they, they, they if we follow story. this, though, Bill, right? And we hear about things like alien abductions. We've got women that claim that they've basically been used for hybrid programs. Now, let's say we do have ambassadors, and you were talking about one of them that was down here in the Pentagon, some kind of liaison. We've heard of ones in Dulce before, the underground base. Is there then some kind of deal been done with our government where we're basically an experiment? Oh, absolutely. We made we made a deal and we, we reneged on it and they reneged on it. The, you know, the deal was we don't use nukes. The deal was that they don't abduct and we reneged with the nukes and they abduct. But also our government does a hell of a lot of this abducting on their own. And you know that. But when you when you take Dulcie and the story there and uh, Schneider, his uh, last conference, two months before they suicided him, you, you, you've got to accept all this as fact. And, and like I said, you live in a giant aquarium and you're just one of the fishies swimming around and you can't ignore the rest of them. So Joe, even Valiant Thor loves and knows Jesus and knows he's very yeah. much alive. Well, Thor was a titan, you know? That's the thing, Thor was a titan. And you know whether you call him a titan or a fallen one, or whatever, they all know who the creator was. They all know. You know, that's well, his, the thing. His, so, his name is Valiant Thor. Huh? He, he, wasn't, he wasn't the Thor. Oh, 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 oh. yeah, right, right, right. No, I, I got what you're saying. No, I'm talking about Thor the Titan. Yeah. Because that's, like, cool and whatnot. And, yeah. and I wanted to say, wouldn't life be more interesting if they finally let out the fact that there are fairies, elves, and gnomes? I mean, are you kidding? Come on. This would be great. I mean, come <laughs> yeah. on. In high school, I grew up reading like R.A. Salvatore and the Icewind Dale trilogy and all that kind of stuff. I mean, come on. It would be great if there's like dark elves and all that stuff. Of course, you know, and, and barbarians and all. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the the fairy that Steve Quayle has with a with a uh, a stinger or or hook on its tail. No, I, I mean, don't like that. The, you can have the, you can have the fairy with the stinger. I don't want that. No. <laughs> well, yeah. well, well, you know, guys, him with speaking of wait a minute, speaking of fairies with stingers, go ahead, Kev. Yeah, I know. I knew you were going to say that. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fairy that rides a unicorn. Okay, and then when yeah, I wake yeah. up, when I wake up, I have to question: Is this the dream or was that? Ooh. But, you know, we're talking about aliens and the guy who'd done the ad for Freaky Friday, only Stephen Hawkins, he is weighing back in on this, guys, because, again, he is sending out a warning to people. He is convinced there are aliens out there, and he's also saying, if we start trying to contact them, watch out, because we've seen what happened when the air quotes discovered the Americas. Just saying, guys. Kev, you can't prove to me that any of those words are coming from that man. I, yeah, exactly. You can't prove any of those words. That, you know, he's he's just a puppet. He's just he a broken was hacked. puppet. He was hacked. Yeah, that's right. How? Yeah, I mean, come on, dude. They're <laughs> they're hacking Teslas. His his uh, what his speech software was written in like 1979. Come on, I mean, unless it, unless you just can't hack it, but I I think you can. I mean, 
He, uh, needs, he needs a new voice. We all agree, right? He needs a, it's 2016. Come on. Let's get, get a little more there, buddy. Come on. My, my Mr. Purple Tight cartoon has a better voice than him. No, Come he, on, guys. He's been, he's been offered better voices, but he actually identifies with that voice now because it's been there so long. Yeah, but yeah, it I needs like- more fluent, no more fluency in it. It needs some more fluency. We got to agree on that because, I mean, really, I mean, you know, just those that old style, nah, 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 nah. I mean, you listen, you got to pay attention, you know, it's, it's very slow progress, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, not to mention in this article, right? Yeah. They've got a picture of Earth. They got a picture of Gleese 832C, right? First of all, how in the hell are they? Co- this is all just a bunch of imagination. It's like, oh, this is great. This is nice. this is what it, we think it would look like based on the gases that we see when the little flicker of light goes behind in, in front of the sun and all this. Get out of here! You I don't do know better what the heck. Photoshop than they do. You know that exactly, man. I mean, th- that's the one thing. You know, Kev Baker can do it. Anybody can do it. And, um, <laughs> and let me tell you something. This uh, current habitable exoplanets. Yeah, and look at the nice little chart they give you. Oh, it's so beautiful. So nice. It's all imagination. It's all Star Trek. And that's the thing. And all it is, folks, is to justify sending NASA billions and billions of dollars. Pass that- me that picture of the Nephilim, please, Joe. Oh, it- oh, 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 wait, you're imagining what it looks like? Oh, oh no, they're oh. skeletons. They're skeletons with six fingers and six toes and elongated skulls. That's the difference. We have something tangible. You know what they got? It's a flicker of light. It's a fl- oh yes. Have you seen? That. Have you physically seen and touched these skeletons, Joe? Have I fit? No. Because I have- no, I'm only saying I'm not because Mars a lot Lulee of the skeletons. Has, no, listen. A lot of the actual giant pictures that appear on the internet, they were actually part of a competition way back when Photoshop started going, and the competition was to make it look like you were with a giant getting excavated, and a lot of the time these photographs are used. As evidence. Now you know I believe in the Nephilim. Oh, however, right, right. No, I understand however, what you're saying there. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? You can't just write it off because, well, we, we haven't seen it and it's just what they're saying. Because a lot of the stuff in ancient times, well, we haven't seen it and it's just what they're saying. Well, it's like the same thing with the um with the pyramids. Oh yes, it was brass tools. That's how they made the pyramids. And they yes, and they, they put them on barges. What? The blocks went on where? How? In how many years? It's mathematically impossible hover for it to happen barges, that way. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, hover barges. That's right. <laughs> but now I I would believe that before I believe brass tools and like you know barges. No, but what I'm the, saying is is that at least here, at least now, there's tangible evidence that giants walked the earth. You know, and that's the biggest thing that that I have. Whereas with these planets, they tell you, oh, yes, well, we can tell based on the, um, the, the gases that we – or the colors that we see. We can tell what gases uh, make it up. But they're showing, like, pictures of atmospheres and continents and all this as if it's like a close-up shot from a telescope. Mm-hmm. And it's just – it's false advertising. They don't know what the hell it looks like, or do they? Hmm. You know, maybe that's that intergalactic space fleet. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. They have to tell us it's CGI because they can't tell us they've got a photographer up there, can they? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> Play so, with me, Joe. Come on. <laughs> it's so crazy, you know. And then, of course, you've got alien clicks maybe keeping Earth isolated, says a study. You know, RT came out with that a couple of weeks back. Says if an idea... If the idea really is true that aliens are deliberately preventing humans from contacting them, then extraterrestrial civilizations most likely formed a number of cliques rather than a pan-galactic government, says a new study. By the way, there was an actual study that came to that conclusion that it's actually, you know, cliques instead of a pan-galactic government. What? Who paid so for they, this they, study? They, they did a study to just find out that, or, you know, to, to come to the conclusion that, you know... We got I the, mean, good grief, man! We got the alien, we got the alien crypts, and we got the alien <laughs> bloods, and we got the. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They all, they're all in their clique. What you know? So it says, uh, the Fermi paradox, named after physicist Enrico Fermi, says that if sentient life is not unique to Earth, then our galaxy should have plenty of other civilizations, including some more technologically advanced than ours. 
The paradoxical part is that we don't, we haven't uh, detected any signs of them until Monday. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, come on. A, supp a supposition called the zoo hypothesis is one possible solution for the conundrum and states that alien civilizations are for some reason deliberately keeping humans from detecting any extraterrestrial life. Hey, can I tell you something? Yeah, that, I would actually believe that, you know? I would actually believe that, Kev. If we were like uh, intergalactic reality TV. Oh, absolutely. And I how entertaining to, are we? That's all I got to say. I used to say for a laugh that probably in some stage in an alien's development, they have a field trip. They come to the Van Allen radiation belt. They take a quick pit stop and say, this is how you don't do it. And then they go away again. Look at the monkeys, boys. Look at the monkeys. Don't don't feed the yeah, animals. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, don't go there. That place is a mess. Don't, <laughs> don't even bother. The kids are like, they're building nuclear reactors. What? Ne next to the oceans? <laughs> on fault lines? Oh, my <laughs> word. What are they? They're morons? What? Come on. Says one problem with this answer is that it would require the galactic community to form a united government to agree and enforce such an information blockade. Do you see what I'm saying, man? You don't have to pay us anything to talk about stuff like that. And they commissioned a study that came up with that. This is crazy. It says in a paper published online this week, astrophysicist Duncan Forgan used a model which showed that if there are indeed multiple civilizations in the Milky Way, they are much more likely to form a number of cliques than a single galactic club. All I got to say is, Kev, how do we get in this? Because <laughs> how do you get paid to come up with stuff like this? Because we would be they rich. Got they they gotta fly down and then you gotta let them jump you and then you're in the you're in. Yeah, he says, "quote We find that there uh, there to, we find that there that for there to be a single group, a galactic club, if you will, the mean civilization lifetime must be extremely long, and the arrival time between civilizations must be in fact relatively short. This is perhaps <laughs> an unlikely scenario, as it would require a large number of civilizations to emerge across the galaxy in a very short time frame." So says the paper. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. Well, they never, once, they so, never watched once. Star Trek in a Federation. My God, they should watch a little more television. Well, Bill, yeah. let's come to you because you seem to have a grasp of this whole topic of exopolitics. And I mean, what is the kind of structure out there? I mean, is there galactic federations? Is there some kind of pecking order that way? I, I'm, I'm keen to know, man. I used to look into this stuff, but I drifted away from it. There, there absolutely is, and if any of you uh, listen to Bill Deagle, he's an expert on it. I mean, there is a federation out there, and it, it's just like down here. You have good guys fighting bad guys. There, there are galactic wars out there, and you know we we really are on a uh, on a little piece of paradise. I also read a book where we are actually. Uh, I'll think of it in a minute. We are. Um, uh, Zone of displacement. Yeah. We are in a zone of displacement where we actually do not have a reflection out to anywhere else and that we are basically a, a proving ground, a training ground that uh, you prove your muster here and you move on. But do be aware of the soul traps after you die. You must. I have a few conclusions on that, but nothing that I would share with anybody Don't right now. Don't go to the light, Bill. Is that what you're saying? Don't yeah, go well, to the light. Well, for one, because that's a birth canal and you start all over. I, I have this theory about hanging out, enjoying the solitude and quiet until somebody comes along and shows you the way. And, but you do have to have a defense against the soul trappers that, that would take you where you don't want to go. What was that Patrick Swayze movie? Um, Ghost. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, where those like awesome. still makes those, me cry. Does it really? Oh, I'm a I'm a soft hate films, dude. Movie. I'm I a soft and and sit, sir, she doesn't shed one tear at anything. Yeah, I am a bubbling That's wreck. Horrible. Yeah, it was because it was horrible. Uh, I wish I had I wish I had the clip to to play this a little brief verse of the music for you there, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I, I, I have seen me actually you tearing know the up. Song. I've seen me tear. I don't do it, Ken. I've seen me tearing up watching adverts, man. There's something far wrong with my emotions. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, you, you're getting older. That's what it's it middle is. Age, dude, it's what get yeah. yeah, you get more emotional. You see a commercial and you're getting teary eyed, and people looking at you. Okay. You know, oh, Kenny okay. was doing this in Little House in the Prairie. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I had a tear yeah. in my eye the other night when Chris Everard was on. That guy blew my mind. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Chris, Chris does some good stuff. You know, and, and closing this article out, it, it does say, you know, more likely scenario is that there are multiple conflicting cliques of civilizations that can't agree on a universal policy. It says that one clique attempting to place an interdict on contracting on contacting primitive civilizations is likely to encounter significant problems if another clique disagrees. I mean, where's this? Guy? It's a, it may well still be the case that Earth resides in a region of space occupied by a conservative clique. <laughs> now it's political. Uh, on non-contact. He says, however, as our ability to detect unintentional signals for both living and dead civilization increases, we should presumably be able to break the deadlock imposed in this scenario. That's right. So, so this is uh, an actual paper from <clears throat> a study. Well, Joe, they can keep their clicks because we've got our whistles. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes. We Don't we, Johnny? Yes. Yeah, he's a I can't huh? believe you've been so quiet here, John. You're my wingman, and you love all the space woo. Oh no, I'm doing fine, Kev. Don't you worry. <laughs> too too woo even for you, John. Oh no, are you kidding? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No, I've went infinite uh, universe and. Right. Well, we've got we've got a couple of minutes left, so I'm just going to interrogate Bill. How about Mars, Bill? We see the remnants of some ancient civilizations up there, ours or some other species, beings, whatever? Well, it's theirs, and they are us, and we are back, and it's, it's, it's all a big jumble. It really is. It's an alphabet soup. You can't say theirs, ours. But, yeah, seriously, gentlemen, those U.S. Air Force tunnel borers, they have been sent to Mars and the moon, and, you know, that story about, oh, I haven't gone back to the moon. We got kicked off. Bull. Nobody kicks us out of any place with the, with the Nordics on our side. And, you know, the Drake, it's just, it's, it's, it's typical. It's typical politics up there as it is down here. It, it's macrocosm and microcosm. What you see in the itty bitty, itty bitty, tiny microscope down to your quantum size it's the same thing in, in, the, in the macro size. And that's what bothers me about our civilization as I've put up those uh, microprocessors that are as big as all of Egypt built. We're, we're thinking on a, on a small scale and we should be creating those macro processors and the, um, the computer motherboards that are the size of uh, Montana. I don't see why we're thinking so small. Well, but, one yeah. guy, one guy, Bill, who I think could really take that on is probably Elon Musk. Now, this all ties in because lately we've seen one of his rockets exploding on the launch pad. We've had one of his cars now hacked from 12 miles away. Myself, Nano Girl, and Johnny, we've been speculating that maybe, maybe, just maybe, somebody is trying to scupper his dreams of getting up into space, interstellar travel, and possibly it could be this breakaway mob because they're still wanting to keep their games hidden. Are we maybe just speculating too much there, or could that fit? No, absolutely not. And still, they're using Flintstone technology. You know, lighting that 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 giant candle and sending men up into space. When why bother? But yeah, I agree that uh, they're they're keeping their secrets to themselves. And if that rocket didn't blow up of its own accord. They they certainly stopped him from from doing that. And that yeah. name that name got Johnny Whistle's blood boiling, didn't it, Johnny? <laughs> you should be getting a shotgun. I don't know about anything else. Elon the AI Musketeer. That oh, should be no his name, way. right? No way, oh, come Kev. on, that's good. That's good, guys. Come on. But he's wanting to put things in your brain, Kev. It's unnatural for something to mess with your brain. Your brain is a unique function. Well, it's a, Johnny, a, it's a quantum computer all in one before quantum computers were ever even thought of. And what was the story that we covered a few weeks ago, Scotty, where most brains now have got particulates of pollution, they say in there? Dare I say chemtrails, yeah. guys? Mm hmm. And, you know, and they said that, uh, you know, they they try to whitewash it and say, well, it's just because of the uh, pollution, you know, coming from cars and uh, factories yeah. and stuff. <laughs> but it's uh, 
magnetite, you know, with a magnetic, uh, you know, it reacts magnetically to, you know, whatever. You, all you gotta do is have uh, magnetic frequencies and, or whatever. And, you know, yeah. they found that that's in everyone's brain now. Yeah, get some. Yeah. And we're halfway it, done. We're halfway done, so we'll be right back after these messages, folks. Don't go away. You're listening to Freaky Friday on Truth Frequency Radio, truthfrequencyradio.com. 